Welcome to the Sense of Soul podcast. We are your hosts, Shannon and Mandy. Grab your coffee, open your mind, heart, and soul. It's time to awaken. Hey friends, if you are looking for ad-free Sense of Soul episodes, you can find them at Sense of Soul Patreon. Become a monthly member at any level. You will also have access to our monthly SOS Sacred Circles, our mini-series, merch, and much more. And it's a great way to help support our podcast so that we can continue to bring you inspiring episodes twice a week with our enlightened guests from all around the world. Check out our Patreon. Today we have with us Marta Miller. She's the co-founder and CEO of Lefty Production, a one-stop U.S. apparel manufacturer. Marta has 15 plus years experience in the fashion industry, and I can't wait to talk to Marta all about how she can balance both being a successful entrepreneur and mother. So welcome, Marta. Hi, how are you? I am good. How are you? Good, good, good. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. So where are you at? We live in Texas now. And so we're in Austin. And then I have a company in Austin that I go to a lot. And then I have the company in Los Angeles. Okay. So you go back and forth. Yeah, yeah. Where are you originally? I'm originally from Houston. What about you? Oh, okay. Well, I'm originally from New Orleans. So pretty much cousins there. (laughs) Where do you live now? In Colorado. Oh, I'm jealous. Where in Colorado? In the suburbs of Denver. I live in Aurora. Oh, so nice. My husband and I spent 4th of July in Vail, and we were just like, oh, this is the way to do it. It's so beautiful. We recently, like, we were in LA for 15 years, and then we recently did the, like, move back home to Texas and you know, everybody in Texas flees to Colorado in the summer. And I'm like, I just want to live there all summer. Like, I don't want to leave. Right. And, you know, coming from Louisiana, we were really the only family that went this West. Anybody else in our family went to Houston. You know, if they left New Orleans, then yeah, went a little up North and they'd go to Houston. So besides that, we're the only family that went this far. And I'm so grateful too, because my dad was an entrepreneur himself. Oh, and wow. I found that in common with you and I, because I was listening to you on another podcast that Simon had sent over and recommended mm-hmm. I listen to. My dad actually opened like the first wholesale, like warehouse grocery stores, like, you know, like Sam's and all that. Like he opened Pace, he opened Buyer's Club. Like I have the blueprints, the, the shovel of the breaking ground. Oh my and God. Then, I know. Then my brother got into sports and he wanted to spend more time doing the things that he loved and travel and this and that. So he went solo and became a distributor on his own. And so then he opened up his own sports equipment store. And my brother still has a store, but we actually closed down my dad's store. But he, like you were talking about your dad, It was, you know, more than just his business. It was his life and we were all involved. We all worked for him. Oh my God, I love that. But you know what? I used to bitch about all the things that my dad made me do. He made me go to, you know, learn about computers. I was building his website like in the 90s because he sent me and my brother to school for that. And then I did a lot of team sales and I was like, this is so not for me. I don't want to do this like my whole life, but I still did it like on the side for him until he passed away. But you know what? Every skill that I ever learned with my dad and growing up with him, because he was such a hard worker and so devoted to his business. I have such good business ethic because of him. I know it's so crazy. I think about, you know, my sister-in-law doesn't work. She's like fully raising the kids and everything. And my brother-in-law is constantly like, this is great. Like, cause he sees my sister-in-law like overwhelmed, just raising two kids. And he's like, yeah. he's like, this is just so crazy what you're doing. Like, how do you do it? And I'm like, I know you should have, I'm, I'm like, you should talk to, you know, my husband because, you know, it is a lot, but it's just, you know, you just kind of weave it into your life. The times I've found that I've gotten the most frustrated with owning a business is when I've wanted it to be kind of compartmentalized and I can't Mm -hmm. accomplish that, you know, 
And then I think yeah. about just growing up with a dad as an entrepreneur. And I'm like, that generation just worked so hard. There wasn't yeah. this like compartmentalize your life, like work and then weekend and then play and like, don't let a work call interrupt. And, you know, it was just very much like woven into their lives. You know, like I remember yeah. just growing sure. up and like, you know, like we had bought mitzvahs and like half of like our bat mitzvah was my dad's employees. And, you know, like they were just part of our lives. I kind of think that once I separated that need to not have it be part of my life, I just got less frustrated and I became like more successful, right? Because I kind of was like, all right, well, you know, I might like be at a doctor's appointment, but in texting an employee, and you know, like this is just, it is what it is, you know, like, and I think if you can just kind of explain it to, to your kids and not, you know, like my parents didn't feel guilty, you know, they weren't, they didn't feel bad about like trying to put like food on the table for us. Like that was such a, you know, my mom never had guilt. Like I remember sitting in offices, like she would you know, take me to the doctor's office. And, you know, she had, you know, her big ledger book that was like, so huge. And she would bring it into the office. My kids grew up on that ledger book for my dad. They learned how to do those skills from a young age. I know. And I remember just, you know, sitting, you know, for a speech therapist appointment. And there my mom was just like working away, you know, and I just think that it's not good for these kids for us to protect us from it, right? Like, they should know that, like, yeah, you got that, you know, Pokemon shirt, and like, mom worked (laughs) hard for it, you know, like, I don't think it's a bad thing to be showing them that. And it is what it is. So if you have a good, a good balance, you know, and you can make it fun. I had Barney going on in my office when I worked for my dad. My, all of my children came to work with me at some point or another. They grew up there, especially my oldest son, who would then he ended up working for my dad until my dad passed. We all did. My dad had, I mean, it was like every one of my friends at some point or my brother's friends, or, I mean, I'm telling you when you were talking about how it was like a family and everyone around you, I mean, I found so much similarities there. But I do have to say that because I am from Louisiana, my mom did not work. I mean, she did sometimes come up and work for my dad, but she was more of the traditional Southern woman who cooked and cleaned and and shopped a lot, still does. And, you know, and it was something in Colorado that was different. When I moved here, that was, that was one thing that I saw that that was very different was the dynamics that was going on in my household where my dad worked really hard. He worked his ass off and he was proud of that mm. he could provide for his family where my mom got to take care of us. You know, I, my twenties, I became a mother and I remember thinking, okay, well, th- it's my turn. I get to be the mom, take care of the kids, clean the house, do, you know, make the food, make sure everything's nice when my husband gets home and do all the things still help my dad, by the way, but I felt like that was a role that I was to play and actually it didn't, it didn't work out because I ended up losing my shit and was like, <laughs> this is, yeah, I know. And I think like, if that's your role and you're good at that, you know, then that should be your role, right? And yeah, but I'm like, I don't like to cook. So I'm like, I'm like, Me I'm, actually neither, bad at, I'm actually bad at that job. So Me I'm too. Like, My should, kids will tell you. Oh. Yeah, I should probably same. keep making clothes. I'm quite the <laughs> chef in a garment factory, but I'm just not the chef with food. And so, yeah. you know, I do a load of laundry and I'll fold it. And I'm just like, I have so much ADD. I like can me barely too. get through it. I'm like, I'm terrible at this job. It's not the job for me. That I hurts. love the taking care of kids part. That part, I like, right. am, I would say that part is like my favorite. Like, you know, I, I love it. And as, you know, as they evolve, like I'm like loving, like, reading with them you know so I love that part all the domestic things that I'm just like 
not very good at and I don't find any like it does it doesn't bring me any joy <laughs> so like you know I think you need to do what brings you joy and happiness and you know kind of stay in those lanes and then you'll be successful. Um, we just actually brought on an au pair and I'm just shocked at like the fact that I didn't <laughs> do this earlier. I'm like, this is amazing. So right. that's, that's awesome. So I am an artist at heart. I do like fashion, but you know, I'm almost, I'm like my late forties. So I've got kids who in their twenties and then my 10 year olds. So I'm like, fashion to me is comfort right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, and, you know, and I used to look to Pinterest, but now my kids are like, no, you have to look to TikTok now. But, you know, being in your industry, it's, it must be hard because I mean, it, styles are, are changing quicker than the seasons. Totally, totally. Um, you know, and it's, it's also weird because, um, fashion used to be very calendar driven, you know, like Mm. it was, you were always on a calendar because you were always getting in front of the stores and the whole fashion industry has just turned upside down (laughs) with influencers, with TikTok, with, you know, what's trending with the amount of travel people do like bathing suit season used to be like a four month business. Now I have bathing suits on my machines all year all and so year. it's yeah. just the whole fashion industry has really just it makes me feel old thinking about <laughs> it because I just am like wow I've been in this industry pre face like pre not Facebook but pre Instagram for sure and you know just you know how we shop is so you know in the last 10 years is totally different than how we shopped you know yeah. the for years and years. I mean, my grandparents owned stores in in Texas and, you know, it's like, I don't even go, I don't even go to the store that often, you know? And so shopping behavior is different. How we're influenced by fashion is different. Um, It's just the changes are so fast. It's like hard to keep up with, but yeah, when I got in the fashion industry, you know, it was just such a different place than it is today. You know, it was so brand driven. It was so, you know, you had to like the kitchen buyer was like the most important person, you know, and like, Mm -hmm. I don't even think kitchen's around anymore, but like, you know, all of that kind of drive of like, you know, paparazzi and trying to get a picture and then like whatever they would shoot on, you know, whatever celebrity they had was what was, like blowing up whereas it's just it's so different now now it's like you're following an influencer and she's a mom from Colorado and you know that's where you're getting your fashion from you know so it's yeah that's so it is so different and also we had Lisa Evans who I loved her episode it was so good you should go and listen to it but I I do you know who Lisa she's so great but she was saying you know like also having to make sure that we're not just only having an option for cute clothes from like zero to six, (laughs) you know, and everybody being able to, you know, fit into cute clothes. I mean, because for a while there, even when you're pregnant, I'm so glad that maternity clothes finally turned cute. With my last one, they were, but like prior to that, I remember back in, you know, when I had my older kids in the late nineties, I mean, oh my God, I was like lucky to go to Mervyn's and find anything decent. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, they treated pregnancy almost like a sickness, you know? Yeah, true. It was so, well, my first brand was a maternity clothing brand. I Um, saw that. And yeah, that was like really kind of like our motto was like, why should this be like this frumpy experience? And that was, I started that brand in the early, like 2007, we started. And even then there weren't many options, you know, it was, that was just the kind of beginning of changing that maternity industry was when it was kind of really transitioning. Um, Now it's like amazing what the options are and it's so cute and everything. But yeah, there was such a kind of 
clinical element surrounded by mm. being pregnant. There was like no celebration of it, not something yeah. that made you feel like happy. So yeah, we totally, you know, had empathy for that industry because it was, I love it was that. a rough one. It was a rough it one. It is because you know what, what you wear and how you feel in it really shapes your day almost, you know, totally. it really, yeah, totally. it starts your whole day off. I came into the fashion industry just really wanting that like influence, right? That like, whatever, like to be a designer. And, you know, now my, now my job is so far removed from being able to make pretty things and all of that, you know, sometimes I'm making, you know, a a knee brace for a physical therapist, you know, so um, we work a lot with designers, but we also work a lot with prototyping and product development and solving a problem. Like I'm making a backpack for, you know, people that bring their dogs everywhere. That's going to have like a bowl, Ah. you know, roll out of it. So, you know, fashion is definitely still 70% of the business, but what we really do is kind of let people be the designer and we kind of do all of the technical manufacturing things that kind of take the joy out of the industry. So one thing I learned is designers want to be designers and all of their time should go to sales and designing because that's where their passion is. Right. And like, then they're going to be super successful because they can go be an influencer and they can be creative. Exactly. And like convince millions of moms to buy their, you know, maternity onesie, whatever, whatever it is, right. They, Mm -hmm. they can really lean into not only the design element, but the kind of reason why they're designing it. And then that leads to sales. But we're seeing just so many micro entrepreneurs now. So I think the world is just changing, right? You either work at a huge company, you're either at like, you know, Amazon or Facebook, you know, you're either at a big corporation or you're an entrepreneur and you kind of have like your own small thing. Right. And so Mm -hmm. those people, I think the industry is changing a lot to a lot of smaller brands um that are really focused on like one thing like I know that like you know my kids didn't sleep well so I love the weighted sleep stack yeah the last like two years going through menopause cooling blankets the cooling pillows the material you know I'm actually looking for function in products so not just totally the style so that's become very purposeful I'm choosing things more consciously We had another guest on Alyssa Couture who she created a line and it's natural, natural products and stuff like that. Yeah. They're conscious and like, I I love shopping like that. Right. Like I, I love buying like from that one lady that like has an idea for a weighted sleep sack, you know, and I love supporting her and hearing her story. But a lot of times, like we're kind of moving into like product driven categories, as opposed to like huge, big fashion houses, a little bit, we're like kind of making that shift, I think. And those people really are often, you know, maybe a team of less than five, you know, doing everything like our dads and, you know, they really need the bandwidth. So where Lefty and Stitch Texas come in is we kind of handle all of that back in for them on product development, making and all of that so that they can enjoy the, enjoy the business that they're in. Right. And not get too overwhelmed by it. So, you know, that's kind of where we're at right now, but so gone are the days where I'm sketching (laughs) and, (laughs) and dreaming up uh, different things. Maybe I'll circle back to that, you know, in, in retirement or something, but you know, right now I'm kind of focused on just kind of giving lots of designers this experience for them so that they have it a lot easier. And, you know, that was kind of a need I found in the market. And how cool is it that you do see these people who have ideas and go on TikTok 
my daughter had come across one of those flat laid bags that you open. It's like a, it's called the splay tray. Have you seen it? Oh, cool. No. It is so amazing for makeup, for kids stuff. She, and she oh God, shows you, look yeah, look it up. In her TikTok, she shows like how she thought of it and, and designed it and made it. And my daughter bought a few and I was like, oh my gosh, how smart is this? I mean, it just like springs open and so you can lay it flat. So then you have all your makeup, you can see everything. And when you're done, you just spring it up. And it's a cute little travel bag, but you can buy different sizes so kids can put, like, say, all of their crayons or cars. Oh, I love it. Yes, it's awesome. And it's so cute, too. So I think that because people are more conscious, like you were saying, they're looking for products that are still pleasing to the eye, yet very functional right now. And so I agree with you. It's fun to support that person. I mean, we hear. Yes, I want to. Yes. Yes, you want to, you want to root for them. You know, I think that big businesses are, you know, like what's happening with like the Zara's of the world and the gaps of the world. Like it is like toxic for our environment. Fast fashion like is so bad. And I think that, you know, really supporting smaller local brands, you know, the, we have entrepreneurs that are 13, you know, and they, (laughs) you know, might, they might play lacrosse and they like, are like, why, you know, where do I put, you know, whatever it is, I feel like, I feel like light bulbs go off in people's heads all the time. Yeah. My co-host Mandy, she does that. She always has ideas. She's like, they should do this. They should, she's been doing this since we've been friends since we we're teenagers. She's always oh done my that. Gosh. And then know. like, you know, it's a year so later. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's so if somebody else has done it or, yeah. you know, and it's just, but we're living in a time where you can have that light bulb go off in your head and you can build that thing, right? And get it made and talk to your audience yourself and get it out there. And, you know, so it's kind of like a really, in my opinion, exciting time for like entrepreneurs or people with ideas. I think that right now, like, you know, we're seeing like, I think Meta today laid off 11,000 people. And I'm like, I bet half of those 11,000 people are going to go get a job and the other half are going to start something. One of the ads that we have when we release this is his, um, his, he's only 26 years old. His company is Intention Wave. You pick out a piece of jewelry and then you leave a message. So you upload an audio. It could be from somebody else or it could be yours. And then they take the sound wave and they put it on the jewelry. That's so cool. And so, and then you have a QR code that you can go and listen to what it says. And it's always available for you to listen to it. Hey listeners, have you checked out intentionwave.com where you can transform the sound of your voice into a meaningful jewelry piece. When you visit their online store, you can record a voice directly on their website and transform it into a unique sound wave frequency pattern and engrave it on the jewelry piece of your choice. You will also receive a unique QR code that you can scan whenever you want to listen to your special recorded sound message. This is a perfect gift for Christmas for your loved one. So get online right now and order your special piece. Go to intentionwave.com. That's I-N-T-E-N-T-I-O-N-W-A-V-E.com to order your special and unique gift that will last forever. You know, it's just like these ideas. Mm -hmm. And I think that like you were saying, during COVID and just more recently, because people are more inside, they're sitting around going, hmm, I wish I would, (laughs) wish I had this, or this would be easy to do, or, you know, sitting around thinking about ideas. People aren't limiting themselves is kind of what I mean anymore, like they used to. I think so. I think, you know, this work from home model and, you know, kind of, tapping inward a little bit, like, why am I, you know, why am I dependent on 
getting a job. Like maybe I'm creative and I can do this amazing thing and I can, you know, make my own livelihood. So Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, we're going to just see more and more and more of this, in my opinion, because I think also people want to enjoy their lives in a different way, right? And really find that meaning. I think COVID really pushed people to kind of question the rat race, kind of question, you know, the way they've been living their lives and kind of really push them to realize like life's short. It's not that like every day is just given to us. So, and actually just you saying that made me think of my dad, because I'll be honest with you, he worked, but he didn't have the balance of taking care of himself. So he worked himself Mm -hmm. to death. He died young. He died at 64. And really, I'm much like him. I'm very driven. I am a workhorse. I sometimes probably am on the unhealthy side, how much I work sometimes. And so it was important that I got self-care, that I took care of myself, that I learned some tools to be successful Mm -hmm. in controlling anxiety, breathing. I don't think my dad knew how to breathe. I don't think he actually Mm -hmm. probably took a deep breath in his life. And in, you know what, some people say, well, if he didn't have that, he probably would have died without it. Like that was his livelihood. But he died at 64, you know, from, you know, heart issues because he never, you know, he never had. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like, what do you do? Yeah. You have to have some sort of. important. Yeah. It is important. You know, our move from LA to Texas, like, was so important for me as a person and for my husband, like, for just us as a family. Um, LA is so hard. Like everything you do is so hard, you know, like, it's just like, Mm -hmm. you know, you're always driving, you're always traveling, you're always on one side of the town, but you need to be on the other side of town. Um, Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's a hard, it's a hard place to live. I'm happy I live there because I think it's like a place like a New York that you have like a tempo that like you get used to Mm -hmm. that makes you kind of able to function at a different like level, right? (laughs) So I'm happy I had that. I'm happy I had that experience, but I was very ready to be done with it. You know, I think that was a big change for me. um, And especially as a leader, because I really was always at my factory. I was always working. I was, I mean, I didn't even drive to work because I have such, like, I'm such a distracted person. My husband wasn't comfortable with me driving because I would get text messages and whatever. So I would Uber yeah. to work every morning so that I could like walk into the door and like have not a frazzled energy. So I've yeah. always been really conscious of like what my energy is and how others could perceive it and just wanting, like I personally like need my energy to be good. And so I was always conscious of it, but I think I led by... I felt like I had to manage everything in order for things to go right. Like what's going on with this thing? What's going on with this? You know, I just kind of wanted to know everything happening. Was it that you were scared? Like if you trusted other people to fully take that, that it may not get done right or. Totally. And, you know, I kind of wanted to micromanage the way things were happening. Yeah. And then COVID happened. We left thinking we were going to go to Texas for like two weeks because like we wanted a swimming pool you know I was like that sounds great like let's go get a swimming pool like we're gonna have two hyper boys that are gonna need more space for a two-week vacation you know we didn't go back to LA for over a year because travel restriction you know all of all of COVID right 2020 was such a crazy thing for so many people and you know I just didn't want to get on a plane like that just didn't sound like a good idea to me but then I was like wow things are running better than ever. If I let people lead and I Mm -hmm. believe in them and rely on them and they're happier because nobody's breathing down their neck. And so it was really COVID that forced me to lead properly. You know, I'm definitely, I hate a full inbox. I'm definitely have a hard time falling asleep at night knowing that, you know, I have 60 emails or whatever it is. But 
I think I also just kind of am getting to a place just like tomorrow's another day. It'll be there. It'll be there. <laughs> and when I'm sure. ready for it to be there and I'm ready to deal and I'm ready to address it, like yeah. it'll be there. But maybe this yeah. like sweet moment with my kid Mm. well or if he wants to like snuggle with me and this moment where he needs me to give him information and he can't google it on his own like that moment is not gonna be there so I think it's also just knowing which moments in life are gonna be there like work will always be there they're only little ones that's it and it goes so fast I even like my friend the other day was like you're a little bit like water <laughs> like she's like I don't know what penetrates you like <laughs> and I'm just like I just think that you know things yeah. ebb and flow and you know it always works out and Mm-hmm. You know, my husband has a joke that I'm too ADD to remember to be sad or anxious. Like, I'll have, <laughs> of course, Been I'm there. human. So I'll have anxious moments in life. Like, you know, yeah. I'll be like, oh, my God, I'm so nervous about this. And then oh. he's so sweet. He'll like be like, how do you feel today? And I'm like, fine. Why? Like, you know, and he's like, because last night you were anxious about something. Yeah, so and now it's totally up. over. And I'm like. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot that I was anxious about that thing, you know? Oh, my God. I have such a similar (laughs) personality as well. And, you know, it's funny is that rush, rush. I used to say it was like I I was living in this fast zone. And it's so funny because just this past weekend, which I'm not really in that anymore. In fact, I tried to do less, like try to keep my schedule where I don't look at it and like freak out. And I am very purposeful about all these things that came with age, too. But, yeah, you know, yeah, I I was driving to I don't know where oh, we were just going to dinner. So usually, you know, if it's like whole family, we might be going to a game or to school or but we had a whole family. We're going out to dinner and my partner said, well, why are you driving so fast? And I was like, I am. And, he, and I was like, I think it's just like you had said, this is my tempo this is normal to me. I don't feel like I'm going fast, but I am going fast. And, you know, I wasn't going dangerously fast, but that's just how I roll. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Totally. You know, like, you know, it's not, it's not always the best way to be. I, you know, I definitely struggle. I, I also like work. So sometimes it relaxes me to kind of like, comb through my inbox at <laughs> like 9 p.m. Yeah. I was just like, why are you doing that? But being an entrepreneur is like definitely a unique life. It's a unique life story, no matter how you do it, because you kind of have to be good at a lot of little things. And there's always going to be something weighing on you that you need to get to, you know, it's, it's just a different life story to have, you yeah. know, hats on yeah exactly and you have to shift your energy too because I mean you could be dealing with managing something and then you turn over here and you need to be empathetic to somebody about some issue you know I mean it's just you have to be able to be that chameleon and flow so I I I love that yes I you have to be a chameleon that is a literally like spot on thing yeah and you're dealing with so many different personalities a lot of businesses in the corporate world, you know, in schools, you know, even with teachers, nurses, and you see them doing these team building like workshops and stuff for their employees, which I think is so cool. Cause I, as a coach felt that that was like one of the most important thing is how everybody worked together. Mm -hmm. I know that's why I go to LA and I love it because this last trip, you know, we just, all got together. We went to like our favorite restaurant and, you know, it's just like a few doors down from our office. And we just like sat in a big room and, you know, just kind of went around the table and are like, you know, why are you still here? You know, like, which is such a weird thought, but it, it was so interesting to hear why people are still at their job. Right. And, mm-hmm. you know, it was, it was such an interesting conversation and everybody went around and said it. And, you know, wow. the reason, like the number one reason, you know, we probably, you know, had about 30 people at this dinner and then, or maybe like, maybe like 25, the most common reason 
was for our business was people like love making stuff and that satisfaction of like seeing a problem on paper and like solving it and seeing it in a garment form. And then the second most prevalent reason was community, you know, as simple as that. Yeah. And just see, enjoying their friends, you know, enjoying seeing that same, you know, enjoying seeing that same person. And I think that you get that a lot in the small business environment that you don't really get in corporate America, you know, having yeah. a dad with a small business or whatever, you know, personal. You, you, there's a personal element to it that I think we can't forget as a society as how important that is, right? My father knew all of his people that would come I mean, they would come to him. Mm-hmm. He knew thousands. When he passed, there was thousands of people. He affected so many because, but I mean, he was like the local store for all sports Mm -hmm. here in Colorado, like schools, but he knew them. And even if he didn't know their name, he had a nickname for you, (laughs) but he knew them personally and he knew their families. He watched their kids grow up and it was word of mouth that made my dad so successful. And you know what, for sense of soul as well, we've never hired advertisers, anybody, you know, we've never done that. It's been word of mouth. And I think when your heart is in what you're doing, when you're passionate about it, like the universe just aligns for you. And that success is like divine. Totally, totally. And it's kind of immeasurable, right? And it's kind of something that can't be taught really, you know, like I, like these like team building exercises and all of that. It's like, there's also just something about, letting people just do their thing. You know, a lot of the girls in my office, they call it like a hot girls walk. And like, they just like, <laughs> they just take a lap around the neighborhood, like, you know, for a 15 minute stroll. And, you know, that makes their day. And it's like, whatever it is, I think really kind of leading from a place where, and it's not that I'm, I'm not selling anything when I say this, I'm literally yeah. genuinely like, there's an energy towards being happy and fulfilled that resonates, right? It resonates with clients. Mm. It resonates with, you know, so I think people's individual, just like sense of them feeling like they're enjoying their day, like yeah. it, it causes a frequency. Yeah, yeah. That makes, yeah. That makes so everything much. work. Right. And I had to get on a podcast and talk about like math with somebody, I would probably stutter and sound ridiculous. I mean, I would be word finding. I, I mean, I just, it would be so difficult, but, you know, get me on and start talking about like my passion behind, you know, connecting with our ancestors. I mean, you can hear it. I mean, I can fully feel the multidimensional pieces of Shanna, like be involved in it. And I think that that's what people need to search for. So when kids are actually looking for what am I going to be when I grow up? It's like, what do you love to do? What are you passionate Mm -hmm. about? And I think a lot of times it's not necessarily one of the options that you can choose for a major. A hundred percent. And maybe it's multiple things. You know what I mean? Like I remember really kind of struggling through, you know, kind of trying to figure it out. And because I didn't really have words for it, right? I I didn't really have the words to say I wanted to be an entrepreneur at age Mm -hmm. 18. I didn't really have the words to say, if I was responsible for payroll, you'd be screwed. (laughs) I'd I'd be screwed, right? Like like that sounds like insurmountable to me. Like there's probably nobody worse at the company that could even take on a task like that. So I think the way our system is built, it's like, you have to be really detail oriented. You have to, but there's really no words for, you can be good at a lot of little things, or you could be, you know, really have like this, you know, amazing, like social capacity, right? Like I just am a social human, you know, and Mm -hmm. I just think that I, you know, would always give to you know, just anybody in my path or any, like any friend of a friend or, 
you know, and now I think as a, like with age, I'm just like, you know, I'll always start at that place, but then I'll just kind of be like, the yeah. energy doesn't align with mine. And so I don't need to like, yes. I don't need to go that extra few miles. You yeah. want to focus on like, you know, all the like friendships I do have that are so rich that I want to put time and energy in. Yes. You know, you've got to pick and choose your time. Yeah, pre- is just you so protect important. your energy. I think it's also yes. about protecting your own energy. Like, you know, I, and I think that as life happens and I think a lot of being, you know, an entrepreneur, like, unfortunately, there's a lot of like negative things that happen too. you know, maybe like one of my employees got in a car accident and somebody's like, you know, I'm dealing with the insurance company. There's always a negative, you know, there's always some other paperworky, not or having happy. To call, yeah, to call anybody, like a phone company or anything. Uh, exactly. So and you're just like, I am going to yes. just protect my energy from this, <laughs> you know, and like know yes. that like I got to do it, but it's not going to, it's not, it's not penetrating my happy bubble, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You have to. I mean, it's your responsibility, right? Um, the energy that you bring to your home, to your relationships, mm-hmm. right? Wherever, to your business, it's all your own responsibility. And I just, I've worked on that. That's been my freedom. I would say that has been freedom in my life that I'm able to, mm-hmm. you know, choose, you know, what's going to affect my mood or what is not going to. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I think as a mom, you learn that a lot with your kids, you know, because, yeah, you, do. you know, yeah. somebody's crying, somebody's yes. upset. And my husband, like the other day was making my son do a math problem. And he called me and he's like, didn't want to do oh, it. He's like, I knew you would be an ally with dad. Like, like <sighs> you're so you're so useless. And I'm like, oh, I'm just going to release this comment. Yes. You know, like, I'm yes. just like, I'm not breathing into that comment. You know? Well, Marta, I needed you this morning because it was like, we had to leave in 10 minutes and I, she was up in her room and I had saw her up like 30 minutes before I go in there and I'm like, what are you doing? I have nothing to wear. I hate all my clothes. I have nothing Aww. for winter. And I was like, oh my God, you have a closet full of clothes. In fact, we just spent all weekend color coordinating your closet and She's just like, but I don't want to wear um, long sweatshirt with jeans. Long sweatshirt only looks good with shorts. And I'm like, oh my God. She's Get her some so, tight. Dude, she's so stylish though. So. That's so cool. I was like that as a kid. You know what I would li- literally have her do, which is what I had to do growing up, is I had a clothes journal, which it, it sounds crazy, okay? No, it but doesn't. I would, I would get in front of the mirror And on a day that like, you know, I was okay with like, you know, making a huge mess, right? Uh I would get in front of the mirror and I would like figure out the outfit. Yeah. Like what was the door, you know, like what shoes went with this and like what knee high socks went with it. And like what I would literally curate my outfit and I would take a picture and like literally write it down. And I had Mm. like. 15 of them. Right. And I knew I liked all of them and I knew how to do it. And okay, then so like your go-tos. Yeah. My go-to, but like, but I want, I was pretty into fashion too. So I like, you know, would like pair the stone temple pilot shirt with like the, yeah. you know, the, the bell bottom jeans and you know, the cute little cardigan. Like I really cared about that stuff. So it wasn't just my go-tos, but it was like creative go-tos, if you will. Yes. And then, but I always had a little journal and I literally would like calendar it and know so that like on Monday night, I knew what I was like picking Tuesday morning. So that like, she said last night on the way to school, she's like, I'm really sorry, mommy. And she's like, I know I just was too tired last night to pick out my clothes. Cause usually it's all there, the socks, the shoes, everything. She's so good about it. I would have like 15 of my favorite looks. And I remember like bar and bat mitzvah year. (laughs) Like I was so obsessed with never repeating an outfit. And like, of course, like she said. I just could not do it. And like, 
my <gasps> friend and I would like barter on like who wore it to what event. Cause like our parents weren't going to buy us like, you know, we went to so yeah. many, you know? And so we would all like trade and, you know, so yeah. it was a whole, it was a whole closed bargaining act. <laughs> you so. know what? And I think that parents, you know, that was, a, that was, that's my a second, like most biggest advice I give parents besides the, they're only little ones, but don't sweat the small stuff. You know what I mean? Like if your kids want to like switch clothes with your, for their friends or whatever, I mean, big deal. So you paid a hundred dollars for it and their parent paid 30, but if that makes them happy to switch clothes for the day or whatever, and then we return it, just have boundaries around it. But I mean, why sweat the small stuff? I am just, I'm just not there. I'm so, you know, of course this took me my fourth kid to be so relaxed about things, but I'm like in the end, I mean, it's all just, it's just material stuff. It's her happiness. Totally. You know, that's all it is. It's about her happiness, not about the clothes. I haven't been to school in a long time. And I know things are so different, you know, especially with all the FOMO oh. you got. Oh, good Lord. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. My heart just goes out to them. Like, know. you know, just what they're wearing and, you know, their social media and uh, it's like such a crazy it's such a crazy world. So do you have a girl or a boy, your nine-year-old? I have two boys. Um, okay. And I, we, we have our girl on the way. So I'm, oh, I'm about congratulations. to. Congratulations. But my younger boy really cares about what he wears. My older, I can still curate it for him. Like he could care less, which is, yeah. you know, lovely. He's like, he's like, as long as, you know, I only want Nike or Adidas. And, you know, like, as long as it's oh, like. Yeah, yeah within yeah. that category like he doesn't need to do anything but my younger one like really like cares about his fashion yes. so I still have one like little fashionista and then <laughs> I'll have we'll, we'll see we'll see if I have another one I have found that life is just way smoother if you allow them to lead you mm-hmm. yeah, yeah I I know I I think about that a lot like my um you know, my son's like, come to lunch with me. And, <laughs> you know, I was like, okay, I, I didn't know I could, but like, I'm, I guess I'm going to lunch, you know, do it. All about eventually. It. Like, yeah. yeah like, not like, eventually I'm not going to be me. invited. <laughs> <laughs> eventually I won't be invited to this lunch. So I, oh, yes. so I take the opportunities, but I just look around and I'm like, I remember growing up, there was like, the boys that were like kind of going to be the more popular boys and then, yeah. the, you know, the boys that were, you know, and I'm just like looking at my son and I'm like, he's so comfortable in his skin that mm-hmm. he has no, like, he just wants to be himself. And I'm like, yeah. wow, he's already there, you know, and that's yeah, an awesome thing. And I think a lot of times, you know, the moms want the kids to be, you know, friends with certain kids because yeah. they're friends with those moms and, you know, right. it just feels Tricky. right. And, yeah. yeah. And like, you know, those kids, but I'm like, I just want, you know, him to be with like nice, sweet boys that aren't, you know, going to yes. like sweet. have a good friendship. Like, right. Yeah. yeah. I don't really, I'm like, I don't really care, you know, like I don't want to get. I don't want to get involved in that. I don't want to, you know, be driving this ship. This is like your ship to drive, you know? I love it. And I don't also have time. (laughs) Like, I'm like, well, I'm like, I'm, you know what? And Marta, you're probably a lot like me in the fact that we watched our fathers be successful in doing that. Because when you are a business leader or a leader in anything, you have to be that way. You have to be friends with everyone. You can't just be in a click or you're only going to have click business. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you have to, you know, wear a lot of hats, right? That's like yeah. just kind of part of it. But, you know, I think that, I think the way, I think our world celebrates so many different things than it did in the eighties and nineties. Yes. You know, I think, in, yes. I think we just are living in such a more evolved time. Um, mm-hmm. You know, those, you know, it's just, it's, it's a different time. You know, I think we, there's so much more acceptance. There's so much more interest. And, in, you know, I think the proof is in the pudding, right? When you let people do their own thing, be themselves, like really thrive, really flourish, like they become better versions of themselves. I think it's just a matter of like the world has changed and we've seen it. And I think yeah. that we have more 
like acceptance around those things. Yeah, I think that's a, so much hope for the future, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, they, they're going to need it, right? Because yeah. they're going to be growing up in a tough world dictated by like social media and stuff, you know? Yeah. You need to give them that confidence and, you know, kind of back off a little bit. Well, Marta, thank you so much for coming on. I loved our conversation. Yeah, this was so fun. Yeah, this it was is. so lovely. Just, I thank appreciate you, you Thank you on. for having me. And now it's time for Break That Shit Down. You know, I would say, I think especially as women, like, kind of tap into your, you know, daughter that can't pick out her outfit and, like, take it and explode with that, you know, and see, like, what amazing skills come of it, right? Like, I knew I was creative, but I never knew how it would manifest or what it would be. And I feel so lucky that I was allowed and afforded and supported in order to, like, go on a creative journey. And I think that it's been a really, like, rich gift that I got. And, you know, I think that young moms and you know, moms of teenage daughters and everything like should really just listen to those little people, right? Because that can sometimes be really powerful. And we see it a lot with our clients. We see, you know, this amazing girl from Nashville that just totally knows how to connect with her audience. And she loves dressing her kids for the beach and ends up going and making like a sun protective swimwear line for kids, you know, and is super successful doing that thing. So I think that we're living in a time where like careers and all of that is so different. They don't need to go to medical school to be successful, you know, and a lot of times just kind of really like leaning into like, what is that interest? Like, what is going to make that person special, you know? Yeah, letting people express themselves, whether it's the passion to choose their career or their clothes. <laughs> yeah, totally. Tell everybody where they can find you, your social media or your website. Absolutely. Okay. So we have two companies. One is at Lefty Production Co. And that is our Instagram handle, but you can also go to www.leftyproductionco.com and then our Austin-based company that is newer for me but I bought it from amazing people with the same vision as myself that is at Stitch Texas Co or stitchtexas.com and we do free consultations and free calls and you know even if you just want to call us and pick our brains for 15 minutes because you think you have this idea. Like, I think it's worth calling because, you know, even if you don't do the idea now, maybe you'll do it in two years when the time is right. You know, my team is constantly like, we need to charge for these calls. We spend a lot of time and I refuse to, I'm like, I refuse. I refuse. I just, I can't do it. So the only time we charge for a call is if you want to get to the front of the line, I just refuse to charge people because I just feel like it's a industry that's very secretive and I want to help people like walk through it a little bit because you know I wish somebody did that for me so that's kind Mm -hmm. of where we're at uh well you are an amazing mother and a great example of how you balance that so are you so are you so wonderful thank you you so much and uh, congratulations on your your little one to come and i appreciate you you thank you for having me Thanks for being with us today. We hope you will come back next week. If you like what you hear, don't forget to rate, like, and subscribe. Thank you. We rise to lift you up. Thanks for listening.